JMC V-Learning. Today we will be looking at uh, grade 11 English literature. In grade 11, you know children in your anthology book, you have three poems prescribed for second term syllabus. Out of which we are going to do, we are going to look at the first poem out of the three poems in your anthology book. That's the earthen goblet. Well, have you seen uh, clay pots before? I'm sure you have. In Sri Lankan context, I think the clay pots are frequently can be seen in any part of the world. And any household, the clay pots are being used. Why are they using clay pots? These type of clay pots are available in so many places around the country. And they are in different uh, shapes and you can see some decorative uh, pots also and different shape pots as well. Some people they use these, uh, these for drinking water or hold some sort of a liquid and some people they use as a decorative piece of item in their household. Also people use this as a flower vase and different other purposes. Let's move on to the next slide. Right. What is the process involved in making pots? This process is quite important uh, when you are learning about the poem the earthen goblet. So this process is important for you to analyze the questions, analyze the poem furthermore. So let's look at the process. Who is making the pot? The potter. So the potter is, is going, uh, he's, he's go and collect the clay from the earth. This is where he collects the clay and then he puts this clay onto his wheel. This wheel is something sort of a rotating item. So when it, it rotates, using his hands, he makes this goblet a very much a shapeful object. See, it has a proper shape. Look at the clay. Clay does not have a shape at all. So now with this shape, it has transformed to a goblet, a beautiful shaped goblet. After these two fa uh, phases, it goes straight to here. Some potters, they do have a tool, something like that, to decorate the pot as desired. And then after this process, it goes straight to the oven. What does the oven mean? Oven is to bake your bread. Just like you're breaking your bread, it break, bakes the pot. It extracts the water. After it extracts the water, it goes to the consumers. Consumers like in this piece of work. Consumers are the people who buy just like you and me. They buy the clay pots. Let's move to the next one. Okay, now let's look at a video on how to make the clay pot. On your lips Tell me girl Is there anything Better than this Oh Stanhope Coming wave Joyful dooms, beautiful breezes, visions of you. Oh, stand up. Turn the corner down that old. Ways before me, yeah, no, just drive slow. Feel 
just too good yeah, to be here now to be home. Could I make time stand still? Okay, so uh, as you have seen this, uh, in that particular potter's wheel, it's a sort of a automatic wheel. So it, uh, the wheel rotates automatically. Sometimes the wheelers have manual wheels also. That means they have to manually rotate the wheel. Let's look at the title, the earthen goblet. What does that mean? The earthen, earthen here. Something you extract from the earth. What is goblet? Goblet means something that used to hold water just like this. It holds water, any other liquid. We also call as a chalice. chalice that is to hold water but what do you really extract from earth the clay the material that we extract from the earth is clay so we call as a clay goblet that's what you saw in the video previously and that's what we have explained so we are going to learn about this poem the clay goblet now let's look at the poet Harindranath Chopadhyay, he is an Indian poet. He was born in April 2nd, 1898 and died in June 23rd, 1990. He was from Hyderabad. He was born in Hyderabad, South India, but he lived in Punjab, North India. He was very much, very much known as an English Indian poet. He was not only a poet, he was a dramatist, he was a singer, he was a songwriter and a politician. Politician because he worked for Indian Lok Sabha. His father is a scientist and his mother is a singer. Let's look at the next slide. This is about the poet. Uh, actually, it's an interview done with the poet when he was 88 years old. He has been discussing about his childhood and his work for literature. So let's enjoy this video. You forget we have ancestors, you know, <laughs> and ancestors influence every birth. Well, as ancestors have certainly influenced my birth, my growth, my imagination, my expression, and certainly helped me to create whatever I have done in a very humble way. But of course they are the exterior influences too. I was born in Hyderabad at a time when Hyderabad was like a city in the Arabian Nights. Camels, elephants, men with daggers and all kinds of riches of the past. It was very, very rich, my childhood. My people were very wonderful in their own way. My father was the first DSC of India. DSC, DSC Doctor of Science. I see. And uh, he certainly was a great educationist. He founded the Nizam College. I see. I didn't know that. Yeah. And your father or your mother? My or mother. Were, were they interested in literature and poetry? My, God, my mother was a singer. I my see. father was a writer of a peculiar mystical poetry. But that wasn't his forte. He was a scientist. And a wonderful person with regard to literature, I know Sarojini once said to Father, Father, you know, poetry is the highest science. And Father replied, 
Baby, science is the highest poetry. <laughs> well, that's kind of atmosphere I was uh, brought up in. Then my sisters and brothers, very beautiful, playful people who really loved to have moonlight uh, picnics and things like that. We had a very gorgeous childhood. Okay, that's uh, a small interview that has been done with the uh, Harindranath Chatpadeya. Let's look at the famous poems of the poet Harindranath Chatpadeya. These are some of the poems as well as he was very, as I told you, he is very famous for singing. He is one of the songs also he has sung. Let's go with the poems first. Noon and Shepa Shepa. These are one of the well-known poets of the poem. Spring in winter, the fest of youth, the magic tree, ancient wings, the blood, blood of stones. Spring in winter, virgin and the vineyards, the lady's giant hat. These are some of the poems. So if you have a time, you can go through these poems and uh, learn about this poem. These poems are mostly related to the nature or natural way of living. So in, even this poem that we are going to do today, the earthen goblet is also a nature or natural way of living poem. Uh, and songs, uh, Surya Stogaya, it's a Hindi song that he has sung. That this is one of the famous songs of him about the poem. So before I move on to the poem, I would like to give a brief description about the poem. This is a dialogue. What's a dialogue? Conversation. So you make a conversation between two people, the poet and the goblet. The poet and the goblet. The poet and the goblet is having a conversation. Poet wants to know the pain or the feeling of the goblet. He, the poet wants to ask, well, how do you feel when you've been transformed from a clay life? Now he has given two lives clay life and the goblet life. So he wants to know the feelings of being transferred from clay to the goblet life. He compares the present life and the past life. He in the sense here the goblet. The goblet the goblet uh, compares his present life, the present life as a goblet and a past life as the clay in this point. You all have to turn to page 12. That's the detailed poem analysis. So I'm going to talk about this poem. So please take down all the notes. If you have any difficulties other than this, please refer a, a dictionary or also follow me and take down all the important notes. So turn to page 12 in your anthology book. Let's read the first few lines. O oh, silent goblet, red from head to heel, how did you feel when you were being twirled upon the potter's wheel before the potter gave you to the world? O oh, silent goblet, he says, O oh, silent goblet, he's been silent. When people, actually uh, this poet has given a life to this goblet because he needs to speak it needs to speak about his feelings in order to speak about its feelings it needs to have a life so he says silent goblet when do you really become silent uh, in your life when you become silent when you are worried when you are sad so just like that it's a silent goblet so the goblet is feeling sad silent goblet red from Head to heel is red. It is red as you know from head or from the top to the bottom it is red color. Red color is the earth color. This is the color of color of earth. Color of the earth. How did you feel? Now he asked a direct question. How did you feel when you were being twirled? What is twirled? Spins around or rotates. Spins. Spins. 
when you are being spin around spins upon the potter's wheel now potter's wheel is rotating so when you are being twirl around the potter's wheel spins around the potter's wheel how did you feel before the potter gave you to the world world here is the hand of the consumers in the market you are before you go to the market just like here in the pictures you are been given to the market how did you feel so who is giving to the world the the potter okay right let's see the next slide i felt a conscious impulse in my clay to break away from the great potter's hand that burned so warm i felt a vast feeling of sorrow to be cast into my present form what does that mean i felt a conscious when you are conscious that means you are really aware so he was aware he mean in the sense the goblet is aware aware of what impulse impulse means instinct 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 means some sort of a feeling feelings in my clay he felt something in the clay to break away it has been break down into pieces who has broken down from the great potter's hand from the potter's hand the clay has been divided or break down in uh, by the potter that burns so warm it's very hot he felt hot and burning sensation from where from the potter's hand i felt a vast what do you mean by vast huge huge amount of a lot of amount of sorrow sorrow means sad your sadness sad you are sad feeling of sad to be cast into my present form what is his present form here present the present form is the goblet life goblet life so he says i felt a huge i felt that huge feeling of sorrow the sadness to be transformed into the goblet life next lines before that fatal lover that so me captive on the potter's wheel and cast into his crimson goblet sleep i used to feel the fragrant friendship of a little flower whose root was in my bosom buried deep before that fatal hour what is fatal hour going to be his death time for time to die the death hour death that's his death before my death that saw me captive on the potter's wheel captive captivated hold on hold on uh, hold on or hold into hold into the potter's wheel it has been captivated in the potter's wheel it has been caught off or hold on into potter's wheel and cast into cast means form form or you can say create cast into or form into or create into a crimson goblet shape crimson crimson is a flower which is like red and purplish very very dark red so it says red red goblet sleep goblet is sleeping sleeping this indicates the sleep indicates it's again he's died or his death so let's move on again before that fatal hour before the fatal hour 
it's so that he has been captivated or he has been caught in the porter's wheel and and it, it is getting transformed into a red goblet sleep, red goblet death. He considers this present life as a death life. There is no life at all. There is no life. Let's move on to the next. I used to feel the fragrant friendship of a little flower. Fragrant friendship. I used to feel the fragrant friendship of a little flower. That means what? There was a flower long time ago when he was uh, uh, clay, had, having a clay life. He had a, a relationship or friendship with this flower. A fragrant friendship. It has an aromatic, aromatic uh, smell. Aromatic smell. This relationship is so called that uh, whose roots, the, the flower's roots have been scattered. The roots was in my bosom. Bosom means what? It, is, it was in his breast. Heart, okay, breast. Buried deep. So I used to feel the fragrant friendship. The friendship is fragrant. It has an aromatic uh, smell and offer an aromatic smell of the little flower whose roots with this flower it, the roots have been scattered around my breast and it has gone deep inside so there is a quite intimate relationship it's called an intimate relationship with the flower relationship Tibet relates close relationship with the flower. Right? Let's move on to the other one. So they, these uh, look at the, these a few lines. The potter has drawn out the living breath of me and given me a form which is death of me. My past unshapely natural stage was best. With just one flower flaming through my breast. Okay, so what does the goblet or the clay says? The potter has drawn, he's blaming the potter. The potter has drawn out the living breath. He's no more living there. His breath has been taken by the potter. So the potter, he's blaming him. The potter has drawn out, taken out, taken out the living breath. So he's no more breathing at all and given me a form which is death of me. He considered this life as a death, a total death. He is not aware, he is not living. My past unshapely natural stage was best. My past unshapely natural stage. Unshapely natural stage is the, he is talking about the clay life. Clay life here. Life as a clay is the best. Why? Because it is natural and because it was free and it has a life. Now the life is like a death and he can't even breathe. The potter has taken the uh, breath out of him. Just with one flower flaming through my breast. Even with one flower, he just had a one relationship. With that relationship, he made his life very beautiful. So it just memorizing the past life and it just want to go back and does not want to stay in the present situation. Let's move on to the next slide. Now that's the end of the poem. Now as in every other poem, we have an indirect focus. Even in this poem also, there's an indirect focus. That means there's an inner meaning. So I'm going to explain what type of inner meaning that you have. Now you can see there are four pictures over here. One, this one is a goblet. Here it is like a man, we call him a man. And here this is a flower. The flower that he was talking about, the fragrant friendship of a flower. And underneath the flower you have a clay here. And these are two, uh, it can say, uh, 
a girl we call it as a girl and this one is a boy can you see the difference and can you make up a story what would be the indirect focus in here the girl and boy here and a flower and clay are there and the clay says there is a fragrant friendship with the flower so the clay was very happy because the roots were scattered around the breast and they had a very good relationship just like the flower and the clay it resembles for a girl and boy maybe they had a very good relationship they are girl and boy living in a rural area or we call as a indigenous life we have native people uh, in our country also we have native people and in even other countries also there are native people they are supposed to be living with the natural world but what happened what happened some sort of external force called the potter some sort of a external force called potter has dragged that person out dragged that clay out and transform into a goblin transform into a, a urbanized man civilized man this man supposed to be in that indigenous uh, with the indigenous uh, people and the society but do you think that this has no shape this has a shape but this has a life but this look looking wise he is much more better but what do you think about the inside uh, feelings about this man children he is actually suffering suffering why because he just want to go back to the natural world the indigenous people are belong to the natural world not to the materialistic world or the urbanized world even though he presented nice just want to go back to the natural because the materialistic things are not a um, it's a problem for them what are the materialistic things and the immaterial things material things are the money power they don't bother about the money and power because nature provides them everything so immaterial things are more important for him like the feelings the love so the feelings and love can be taken from this natural environment rather than this environment so it says that it is like a death situation because he can't breathe the everywhere is a corruption pollution everywhere he so want to go back to the natural world so the external force potter has drag out this was done by forces it can be uh, the who would be the external forces it can be uh, effect of effect of uh, tourism right so it can be a effect of tourism or some sort of external party that has been dragged out from the indigenous society and transform into this life but it feels very very bad or this person feels very very bad and he just want to go back to the natural world so that's the indirect focus so let's move on with the other slide poetic techniques uh, i think you are familiar with this poetic techniques and there are few techniques been addressed in this poem first one is a symbolism symbols the poet has used lot of symbols here uh, uh, tell me some examples of the symbols one is a flower flower is actually resembles the girl flower is the indication of the girl and it also has taken a clay and it has also taken a goblet right these are all symbols they don't they don't have a, a life so these are some symbols that they have taken to express the poem the second one is a personification as i told you earlier it has given a living a life to these symbols a personification metaphor what are the metaphors even earth and goblet is a metaphor there are some other metaphors that you can find so please read the poem carefully and please underline or highlight the metaphors in your poem direct speech where do you find the direct speech yes at the first few lines you can find the direct speech that the uh, uh, who is that poet poet ask the goblet how do you feel it's a direct fee direct speech right how do you feel so direct speech is there that's a poetic 
technique that the poet has used. Alliteration. Alliteration means the same sound is repeated. Like for example, fragrant friendship. Fragrant friendship. Look at the sounds. F, F sound. Fragrant friendship. Fragrant friendship. That's what it's called alliteration. Same sound is coming through two words. Fragrant is a one word. Friendship is a one word. This is a poetic technique that the poet has used. Even in here, flower, fleur, fleur. Flower, flaming. Flower, flaming. Fleur, fleur. That is a alliteration. Visual imagery. You can visualize whenever you actually read the poem. You really can visualize what's happening in this poem. And it is, the last one is a conversation. It's a dialogue between the poet and the goblet. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, the summary. So we have come to the end of the poem. And the summary is like this. The, uh, the poem, the poet has taken the clay out of the natural life and it has been transformed to a goblet. So the poet wants to know, the potter has taken actually, potter has taken the clay and transformed to a goblet and poet wants to know how, how he feels, how it feels to be transformed from clay to a goblet life. So goblet is actually, it's a pathetic life for him. It says, I feel a vast feeling of sorrow. He's not at all happy because of the present situation. The present situation is pathetic. Right? It so want to go back to the past because past life is much better comparing to the past and present. The past life is much more better. So it express its feeling in this poem. Theme of the poem, the theme, it's actually, uh, there are few themes associated with each other. So I will just uh, explain it. The sim simplicity of life versus sophisticated life. The poet is talking about the simplicity. What is the simpl simplified life? The indigenous people life or the natural life is simplified life. It can be taken, uh, it is so uh, free and it is so lovable and that is a simple way of living. Sophisticated life, the goblet life is called as a sophisticated. So it compares the life between the simplicity of life and the sophisticated life. Also, it says freedom and lack of freedom. It says I am, I am the goblet life is uh, having less freedom. It's like no, it's like uh, not present, not living. It is a sort of a death situation. But natural life is uh, full of freedom, right? Uh, and it has access to the natural uh, living. And there is a vision there is a difference in the vision the purpose of living also the pur there is a purpose of living in the natural life and in the uh, in the urbanized life or the present life of the goblet there is no purpose of living or life okay let's look at the feelings now these feelings you might be able to use when you're writing the context type questions and essay type questions. So it's, uh, it will be a great advantage for you uh, people to use these uh, uh, words and also to analyze further your questions and uh, evaluate the poem and uh, increases your critical thinking ability. So let's look at the feelings. I have divided this into present life and past life present life as a goblet and uh, yeah present life as a goblet and past life as a clay so how does he feel the present life is depressed very sad depressed and he always it always complains about the present life and he says i am in a form of a death situation a miserable life always mis miserable means there is no purpose there is no vision at all it's a miserable life dim life it's dark there is no light at all there is no vision. When you, when you don't have a vision, it is dark and dim. Yes, there is an advantage in this life. What is it? With a great shape. It has a great shape. Yeah, do you think this shape will uh, do any good for him? No, great shape will not do. Shaping your, shaping your uh, appearance will not do good because the feelings are already hurt. False relationships and temporary Connections, you know, as you say, as the goblet said, 
there is no vision. Why? It could have false relationship with the people. The relationships are not real. But in the natural life, it says natural life, the, there is an intimate, there is a close relationship. So that relationship cannot be found in the present situation. A lack of freedom, it's like a prisoner for him. It's, it's, he, it looks like it, he is in a prison. So there is no freedom at all. No vision or purpose of life. What about the past? Past life as a clay is very happy. He is very much content with the life and enjoys the aromatic sweet smelling of the fragrant flower and it has a strong friendship, strong friendship with the flower or relationship with the girl in the indigenous life. There is a natural life. It says natural life is the best. That's a compliment given. Natural life is the best. It says natural life is the best. Shapeless. Doesn't matter even you are having a shape or uh, without shape. The shapeless life is the best. It's trustworthy relation and everlasting. It's going on and it's everlasting and it's very trust. Uh, you can trust that relationship. Totally free. It doesn't feel like that you are in a uh, prison. Right? So it's totally free. Worth a living. Actually, when you are in the natural state of life, when you are surrounded by the natural world, it is worth to live. So you can get some ideas and critically evaluate your uh, essays using these points. So that's the end of it and I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, read the poem once or twice and use my ideas and develop your ideas to write for the uh, O-level question papers. Thank you children.